I can hear that. Here's the fun button. I do <laughs> the have fun button. I, do I want a fun, fun button. button. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We're going to start this one off inappropriately, I see. Thank you, everybody, for joining us this evening for Bird Dog Chat with Ethan and Kat and Charles in on on the the important side of things there. We've got some check-ins this evening, but this evening is what else can go wrong? We've had one heck of a week, and we're going to talk about a lot of it. It's a variety of things that were very interesting, and when we come up with new and interesting things, we like to share those. So first and foremost, like we do most evenings, we'd like to do some check-ins. And as we're getting allowing people to do their check-ins, I do want to mention a couple quick pieces here. First and foremost, bird dog chat. I got Nick's are back there doing what's Nick's doing? Sniffing my deer. Sniffing the deer. Uh, bird dog chat, bingo. Okay, it's a really fun little way to keep you involved here. If you are on Patreon, you can get a bingo card. There's a link there on the wall. Um, and get you a bingo card. It is new for every um, episode that we have. And then if you get a bingo, things that we do mention, for example, if we talk about Dr. Peter Armstrong, you would be able to check that box. Um now, we can't just say words like new things that we're talking about, and you think that means new product reviews or something, okay? But ultimately, we do want to give stuff away, so if you feel like it's close, mark it, and we'll fact check you in the end. Ooh, is that a picture of it? Mm -hmm. So we'll be able to pop that up there. Wicked. Um, and this evening, the giveaway is a leash. Easy lead. Excuse Get me. it right. Excuse me. Easy lead collar combo with some of the um, orange cones to set up healing drills. Something that everybody could spend more time on, including us. The cones make a really good visual for both you and the dog. To it gives you some direction on how you can work a drill. We've got multiple videos on our playlist in YouTube showing <gasps> Nick, sir. <laughs> Um, Surprise. technical, I, I can't even say that's a technical difficulty because that was definitely the dog's fault. That was a and dog that was difficulty. all dog difficulty. of the power for everything. Yeah, we'd have just about <laughs> lost We'd it. have been gone. Um, good catch, Annie. So, oh, we have a playlist for that on YouTube for healing and healing drills that utilize the cones or easy lead. Uh, that would be great if you win this, Bird Dog Bingo. And it would be great even if you don't win and you have your own easy lead at home or don't win and want to get your own easy lead so you can do some healing drills at home. All the things. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Are you readjusted now? I think so. I Goodness. lost my life there for a moment. Um, the biggest thing that we do like to mention and make sure to not overlook, we mentioned you can get the bingo card on Patreon. What is that? It's a social platform. It's a subscription service. And we based that all around helping you to train your dog. There it is, patreon.com slash standing stone kennels. If you scroll down on the wall, you can see the little, that's for an upcoming seminar. You get those updates first as well as bingo. I'll post a new link sometime, but that's it. You click it, you get your card, you're ready to rock and roll. You can become a patron for as little as $5 a month um, and have the ability to go up in tiers all the way to the point of getting weekly video chats where I can help walk through a training program like I did this morning um and or watch live training sessions i check those on the daily um, rarely do i get behind more than 24 hours so if you are a patron listening to this now and go hmm it took him more than 24 hours to get back to me always just send a second message like hey check this out um because i probably missed it unintentionally but there are the different tiers we also involve a quarterly t-shirt when you're in the the higher tiers there so that's kind of a cool thing um starting at 25 bucks a month I need to upgrade. Because <laughs> you want a t-shirt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, uh, it's a new t-shirt every quarter, and then we have new designs uh, coming through as we roll. I've um, heard so far that the t-shirts are fairly nice quality. The sample that I got was nice, but you never know when they're just shipping them for you what they actually are. Um, 
But all of that being said, uh, patrons are the largest supporter of everything that we do standing stone. So if you are a patron, thank you. If you're not and interested in some way to support the content, you've either benefited from a YouTube video or just ask a question via social media, anything like that, and feel like you'd like a way to give back, um, Patreon is the best way to do that. Um, outside of that, we have a number of different topics that we're going to be rolling through after check-ins. What are the specific headliners here, honey? And then we'll get in the check-ins. I think a lot of people had an opportunity to do that. So, um, let's, let's start with the minor. <sighs> Ethan cut open his hand and had to go get stitches. Pretty minor, but we can tell that story. I got just a few stitches in the old Palmer there, which you can't see with unless I do that. And then a couple more stitches in my finger. And the finger is kind of a thing. Everybody was disappointed here that I didn't just go get a stapler and staple it myself. Um, Seems like something you it. would have done in I a past life. It. I considered it. Uh, it did bleed a lot more than I expected it to. And when I got there, to my defense for not stapling it myself, even the um, nurse practitioner went, uh, can, can you push against my finger here? Um, because it was deep enough that it could have potentially... Cut a tendon. Made my only... I, I could have turned into a Charles finger. <laughs> it's the pinky, but... Well, yeah, my, but mine would have been oh, in the yeah, middle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd had a Charles finger. Oh, it'd have been rough on the middle one. Yeah. I'm, hey, guys. Pardon the growth. Good luck putting gloves on. <laughs> anyway, so that is one topic as well as... Story's been told. That one's done. <laughs> <laughs> the The biggest part of that is you're going to have to talk about the dumb ways to die that you didn't die, thank goodness, but okay, we'll get I'll to that. Yeah. Um, also, so it the all next started with... No, you said give the highlights and then we're going to do check-ins, then we're going to get into stories. Yes, so. pick them. <laughs> We also went through a C-section for the first time in over 11 years of breeding for ourselves and another three years of mentorship prior to that. So that was a new and kind of stressful experience. Uh, we have had a couple litters recently with some additional um, stressful situations. And then um, I guess the biggie is Hex is at K-State. And he just had a medial sternotomy done. And if you've watched any of our previous videos talking about medial median sternotomies, you'll have a clue of why he had to do that. So we'll get into those stories in a minute. Sweet. Let's do some check-ins. We've got checking in from Pennsylvania and Minnesota. Hit that like button, everybody. Yes, please do. We've got Latrobe, Pennsylvania, very specific. Central Missouri, still need rain. Amen, we do too. We've had a little bit, but not enough. Uh, we've got Parachute, Colorado. Hey, Tina. Where it keeps jumping when it does that. Do, 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 do. Southern California. Hey, Elijah. Salt, St. Marie, Ontario. First international check-in. Whoop, whoop. Mission, Kansas. Hey, Ian. We've got... Saskatchewan, another international check-in. Stony Creek, New York. Hey, Angelo. Angleton? Or is that Angleton? I always get that wrong. Angleton, Angleton, Texas. Somebody should put a little angel symbol emoticon if it is an angel so that I know that that's the way you say it. And if it's not, put an angle. <laughs> I don't know if there's an angle emoticon emoji thing. Maybe. Enola, Oklahoma, Cottonwood, California. You get a bingo card on Patreon. Definitely check that out. Hey, Mallory from Cali. Throw the link in uh, there and pin it if you can. Yeah. Springfield, Illinois. Hey, Robert. We'll be seeing you again this weekend. Pretty Prairie checking in. Annie, whoop, whoop. Uh, in D.C. for a business trip, Miss Kelly. I'm still glad you could check in. Mac and Jack's back in New Jersey. Uh, Cleveland, Austin, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lots of Pennsylvanians today. Southeast Kansas, 
Island Park, Idaho, Jersey, Los Angeles, Northern Cali. We've got uh, New York, Massachusetts. Whoa, 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 whoa. You back that up here. It said, Kat, what you drinking? Did you try that gin? No, Miss Kelly, she did not try that gin. I drank she that drank gin. She drank the entire bottle before you were even back in New York. I would almost guarantee it. It was delicious. All and gone. It, and it's a it's a very cute bottle, so it'll probably end up holding some kind of <coughs> pothos extension leaf someday or something like that. But I'm working on the gin that Angelo gave me now, so um, I hadn't opened that one, and that one is also very good, and I'm about halfway through that bottle. So, you know, gin. Massachusetts. We've <laughs> got uh, Rabbit Lake. Oh, that sounds awesome, Melanie. That sounds Buff- enjoyable. Buffalo Trace on, on the Roxy. Hi, from Canada, and we've got Congratulations Quest. Thank you. It was awesome that she, Thunder, and Piper passed their Master Hunter tests and are now Master Hunters. Uh, what else we got? Keeps Alabama, Southwest Ohio, Arizona, Virginia, New Hampshire, another Minnesota, Montana, Michigan, yikes, Australia, whoop, whoop, another international check-in from across the pond, northern Utah, Atlanta, Georgia, Florida, Maine, Quebec, Canada, Mississippi, I just like saying Mississippi, so many S's, Mount Vernon, Washington, Tennessee, Am I missing any? Another Pennsylvania check-in. Tiffin, Ohio. It's not Not Angel. angel, It's Angle. angle. (laughs) There is an Angle thing. Like a right angle. Thank you. Angleton. Hopefully I will remember that for next time because you've checked in once or twice, I know. Uh, Alberta. Thanks for checking in, Kaylin. And Utah. Oh, and North Dakota. Cool. Well, awesome. We've got a whole bunch of check-ins from all over the place. Oh, oh Wiki Wachi, Florida! Yay! That's another one of my favorite ones to say. And Arizona. That's awesome. Well, let's talk about um, the dumb ways Ethan tries to die and get your finger story finished up here. Okay, so um, it all started with the crew, and this is not attempting to be inappropriate in any way, shape, or form. So hear me out on this. It all started with the crew... Pretending that they didn't speak any English. I was trying Working to on point the road. out saying that needs to come off. We have a, there's a little wood burning fire. This is what they, they put a new roof on this. We had some wind damage and it was 20 years old and whatever. So they put a new roof on this building and there's a little wood burning fireplace that came with the frame. We disconnected that. I don't want to burn the thing to the ground. I don't trust myself or anyone else in the whole world. It looked kind of sketchy, legit, but sketchy all at the same time. And I said, we're roofing. Take the old chimney stack off the top off of there. As well as we beam internet from this building to the kennel building. And I'm going to run a wire. Trench it in, hard wire. I I mean, I have two young gentlemen that are going to learn a lot this summer about hard work. And we're going to have them dig a trench for us to run a wire. By hand. Well, I mean, it's not that far. It really and it so, doesn't have to be that deep because it's not going to freeze. And it doesn't matter if it does. Yeah, 20, 25 to 30 inches is all right, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. So um, They need to learn something about hard work, so it's going to yeah. have to be deep enough to make sure they learn. Yeah, but just until we hit the rock basin. Because I think, honestly, that's right there is where they used to park. Um, the people that lived here before used to park like a camper. So they had a rock pad there. Perfect. <laughs> They're not going to have to go dairy deep. I'm not <laughs> trying to be mean, but that's going to be tougher than I think that I, you thought, remember. It, I thought it was going to be. I thought it was mostly sand. No, it's not. It's rock. Anyhow, so I'm trying to explain to them, please take the giant thing that's bolted to that has the internet beamer on and off. Those two things off, they're like, oh, that's not on the work order. We don't understand. Like, okay, well, I'll just climb up there. Got up there just fine. And just so you know, this roof is steep. It's pretty steep. You can see the the gabled windows pop out. I mean, it's steep there. And um, it's one of those things that 
Um, I've been up on the roof multiple times. I mean, I put those things up there. It's not that big of a deal. I just literally lost my footing because it was just tar paper left and I just slipped. But on the way up, there was a really good place that I could hold and pull myself up. It was easy going up, coming back down. I just reached for the same spot and slipped. And as I slipped, I think it was with this hand to come around. And as I slipped, I reached with this hand and grabbed whatever I could and cut through my hand uh, pretty deep, but not horrible. I mean, my palm, this just happened Monday. My palm already feels like I could just take these uh, stitches out and we'd be good to go. But um, Oh, you don't have your phone. Otherwise, we could show what it used to look like. Oh, yeah, I don't have my phone. But um, the, so I slipped, but as I was slipping, this didn't even catch me. It cut my hand and I kept going all the way down to where they had the um, wooden boards. Is it in there? You think? Didn't you send it to them? I might have. No. Yeah, all kinds of inappropriate stuff there. This one. Send, send it to send yourself. It to or yeah. Send it to yourself. We can do it. Send it to you. That's what you're going to do, right? Yeah. And that's a live uh, photo, so you should be able to. It kind of, I do like squish, squish. <laughs> um, anyhow, so I slipped all the way down to where they had the safety um, scaffold. What? It's not scaffolding. What do they call that? That little would, a stop. I don't know what they would have called that. I don't know. It's called something. You put, uh, you put know. stops, basically tagging them so you have a board or something to stand on and whatever. They had one of those, luckily, and that's what caught me before I would have been reaching for guttering, trying to save myself falling off the roof. <sighs> I don't know fun. what I'm doing here. Stop touching <laughs> and I will fix. Oh, there. I finally got it. Now just go up <laughs> I there. Gotcha. Perfect. Um, no, you. that's like a, some weird live video preview thing. It's not like real life. I tried to forward it. Okay. <laughs> Coming in hot. Just so you know any triggers, folks, this isn't horrible, but it doesn't look great either. So if you don't want to look, close your eyes here, and Kat will give you the three, or Charles will give you the three, two, one warning. It's not the end of the world, but it definitely doesn't look pretty. Three, two, one. So just a little... Scritchity scratch there. Um, and again, the lady asked both times. She's like, can you move your finger? Like, yes, I can. I don't think it cut through a tendon. That's why I'm here at the walk-in clinic, not somewhere else. But Not well, at a surgery center. Long story anything. short, I didn't die, so we're good. Or fall off the roof and break multiple bones in your body we're or good. something. Yeah. yeah, we're good. So that was one minor incident, and that just happened Monday. So, you know. Most recent incident as well. Then um, we can talk about the C-section a little bit. Uh, Go into that. That was definitely interesting. So that, um, we have a video as well. By being the key proponent to this. Because I don't know that I would have had I been there. We, we have an answer on the what the roof thing is. Oh, what is it called? A roof jack. But it was not that uh, nice. But it no. was it was, made out of, it was wood. Yep. But it was just, yeah, it was just a two by six. It was six. this. With a two by six in it. That's it. Spot on. Saved Ethan from Dying. a two story fall. I, it the did concrete. It, yeah, it did exactly what it was supposed to. That's helpful. Angelo Jack. called it out. Angelo, you the man. So, C section talk time. We um, had our first C section experience with grit, and that was the Friday before the hunt yeah, test no that you killers. left for. Uh, that would have been May 11th, I think, if I look. No, May 12th. Sorry. May 12th. So, Grit was in labor uh, throughout the evening of the 11th, that Thursday. Doing some panting, nothing serious as far as contractions go or any pushing, but definitely was in kind of that pre-labor, light labor stage. Um, and Sam actually stayed up with her most of the night, which Sam does a great job helping whelp uh, a lot of our litters. And so does a lot of the kennel help. They all sit with mamas at times. Uh, but Sam would be my overnight mama watcher at times when I um, 
have other things that are going to be taking up my time, um, uh, sleep, but also <laughs> uh, needing uh, to be prepared no, for the good. next day yeah. and things like that. Um, and she wants to help out and she wants to learn. So anyway, she sat with Grit all night um, until about 4.30 in the morning and I came out and she had just started doing a little bit of pushing. And I said, okay, Sam, get out of here. I'm going to sit with her. Hopefully we've got puppies here in the next couple hours. And... Um, it all goes flawlessly. Well, she started pushing, and instead of having the nice fluid-like clear, maybe slightly pink or yellow-tinged discharge that you see uh, with those first puppies, we were seeing really dark-colored, um, bloody discharge, which isn't completely abnormal during the birthing process, uh, but it's typically something that I see after we've had a puppy or two. Uh, then I started seeing some green discharge, which is lochia, and that is um, when placental separation happens. So when placentas are starting to detach and puppies should be being born or puppies are already born. And we weren't seeing any of that. We were just seeing this discharge. And I was getting concerned because she'd been, you know, at, in labor, not heavy labor, but in labor for quite a few hours at this point. And, um, had to make that decision of what do I do? Uh, do I go to the vet at this point? Cause this is not something that I've typically seen. I've ever seen prior to a first puppy being born. So, uh, talked with Ethan a little bit and he's like, yeah, maybe we should consider taking her in for a C-section text. Uh, my good old vet friend, Peter, who, um, Dr. Was Dr. Peter, Peter Armstrong, Armstrong DVM. DVM. And in stereo, please. And I was like, this is really early and I'm so sorry if I wake you up, uh, but this is what's going on. And he immediately got back to me, which is awesome. He always says if cat texts or calls, he will immediately respond because it's typically more emergent and he'll just ignore Ethan. So I uh, talked to him and he said, yeah, I would say you want to be headed to the vet here pretty quick have her examined at least, and then if they recommend a C-section, probably moving that direction. Ad placement. <laughs> uh, coasters, keeping the, the table nice. Then, um, of course, it's still way before veterinarian hours, so contact our vet, uh, emergency call. They patch me through to the doctor. I explain kind of what's going on to them as well, and they said, yeah, why don't you bring her in? Let's look at her. So we said, okay, two vets, Let's go. So we went to the vet. Um, Ethan was actually taking off for uh, the hunt test. So I went to the vet. Um, they asked me to leave her. They ran some blood work. They, you know, did a vaginal exam. No puppies that they could feel in the birth canal or anything like that. Um, and they said, okay, at this point, we could administer some oxytocin, some hormones to try and help progress labor, but we don't really know what is going on and why she hasn't had a puppy yet. Maybe there's an abnormally large puppy. Maybe somebody's stuck. We, you know, at this point don't know as well as if we start with oxytocin and only end up getting two or three puppies delivered and still have to move to a C-section, um, later, that's just more stress and distress that those puppies have gone through at this point. Um, so we made the decision that it's probably right to do the C-section at this point. Did the C-section. Um, she did have nine puppies delivered via C-section, and I was able to go pick her up afterwards. Again, all new to me folks have never experienced a C-section before, so really wasn't sure what mama should be acting like after the C-section and um, what kind of care she was going to need, so that was all new. Grit seemed a little woozy to me when I got her back to the kennel. Um, I checked her temperature and it was a little low. Um, her gums were white, which is when there's not really good capillary refill. Um, and just, she seemed still really out of it. I laid her down in the whelping box to start, you know, being with her puppies and she just kind of fell asleep again. And I was like, mm, too concerning for me. So <laughs> loaded her back up, went back to the vet. I think you're being a little... Not quite Under as dramatic. exaggerated when you say she was out of it, she would walk over to a wall and stand against it and just stare at it. Yeah, she was not. It was not good. Not acting right and went with my gut and went back to the vet and they ended up doing some additional anesthesia reversal uh, and she was on a heating pad to warm her back up um, and she perked back up and then by the time we got her back to the kennel, she was 
acting much better. She uh, went right in, started licking puppies, um, started being attentive to them. So I made the right call with the C-section as well as I feel like I made the right call with going back to the vet um, when I was concerned that she wasn't coming around like I would have liked her to. So all that being said, um, the recovery of the C-section has also been a little bit difficult. Uh, Grit has um, internal sutures, of course, but also externally she had staples and she has been at those staples, picking at them, pulling at them, itching at them. It's been a little bit of a disaster Battle. keeping her from messing with that. We're yeah. constantly, have or over the last, you know, week, we've been constantly replacing those staples. Got to two staplers. Yeah. They hold like 25 to 30 staples. I mean, just constantly restapling her, gluing her, surgical glue, vet bond, um, all of that to try and just hold everything together um, so that she's not ripping that apart and prolonging her healing. Uh, But she is just not messing with it. And with a nursing mama that has puppies to care for, a cone isn't really an option because she needs to be able to get to her puppies. She needs to be able to lick and stimulate them. She needs to be able to clean herself. And um, then also can't really put a shirt or anything over her because her puppies need to be able to nurse. Uh, We've jokingly said we should just cut a shirt up and put little holes in it where her her teats would be but inevitably a puppy would get their head stuck in there or their Their entire body body. they'd wiggle their way in there and then they'd be stuck in the shirt so not really a viable option either and Um, it's healed now so there's nothing really to worry about so we're done with that but the process of monitoring that and making sure that she wasn't ripping out all the staples at every moment she could um was definitely um a trial and tribulation so Hundred um, percent. I I think all in all, I will say I'm really proud of you in noticing those things and recognizing. Because I will be honest, I wouldn't have. I've been like, oh, discharge. This is a little bit different than, um, you know, what we normally see, maybe. And I don't know that I would have been quite as attentive. And and I know that you situation. do a little bit less of the whelping than. I do or Sam does. Um, so, you know, you tag me out once in a while when I'm just like, I can't keep my eyes open any longer, but probably don't sit with them as much as, as I do. Um, and even Sam, who is learning, and I relayed all of this to Sam. I said, hey, we decided to do a C-section, and this is why, because I want her to learn and be confident if she ever is seeing something like that to at least first bring it to our attention, then help make a decision. But um, it was a huge learning process, and I... Absolutely, I'm glad we did the C-section, but dang it, I don't want to do another one anytime soon. (laughs) Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I want to take just a quick second to say today's episode brought to you by, I'm I'm just teasing, we don't really do ads that way, but I do want to mention that we do have a website, standingstonesupply.com. The number one thing that I've heard from people is, oh, you have a store? I know a lot of folks on here specifically, I've seen names and everything else. I know we've placed orders and we appreciate the business, but if you're looking for training equipment, we do have a, what we feel like is a pretty awesome supply store because it has no BS. It is just the products that we specifically use and recommend. Now, sometimes they change and that's as we find better things or different things that we like better. We put them on here for y'all. Um, the other side of this specific website is online courses. So we ha- we coined the name there, the Standing Stone School of Dog Training. Um, we have two complete courses, the Versatile Dog Step-by-Step Dog Training and the Retriever Step-by-Step Dog Training Program. These will get you from eight weeks to 12 months. And Train to Retrieve is coming soon. Um, advanced Steadiness is coming soon. And by coming soon, hopefully through this summer, we'll be able to get to them The Whelping and Raising a Litter Guide is going to be priceless. I think that that is undervalued by about 10 times um, due to the number of documents and and diagrams and and all of the things. With the time continuing to progress and the additional um, resources that I'm providing to our kennel help to make sure that everything is being documented appropriately, that price may change. It may end up going to, um, because it hasn't been fully developed yet. The trained retrieve course will stay the same, um, priced as it is, as well as the steadiness course. But I, I agree with you after the additional resources that we'll be adding to it from what I had originally planned, I think that it is undervalued there, but 
all said and done, um, we try and provide a complete package. And ultimately, so you guys are aware, we stock everything and ship everything except for two products. The climb stands, we do not stock. They are just about as fast as us on shipping. And then gunner kennels, we do not stock those either. And that's because they have very few to non-existent stock dealers anymore. Um, they want everything to come directly from gunner themselves from a service standpoint and realistically folks paying for shipping whether that be freight or anything else to get them to us and then ship them out to you basically eliminates us our ability to make any money and it will actually cost you more um but we have pigeons feral and they take pigeons. up a lot of room they take <laughs> up a ton of room and we have some warehouse space but not that much yet we literally have uh almost everything that we use and recommend with garmin products our order was placed this week some of it's on back order with the new 300 and 300 eyes coming out. But we have a ton, 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 ton. Hear me out here. Ton of awesome products available. And again, it's it kind is kind of a one stop shop. I mean, literally, um, if you do get the course, I have a supply list that takes you through what you're going to need in each stage of the course. And you can get most, if not all of it, from our supply store. Um, and it is, it's a one-stop shop. You don't have to click here, click there. Our goal is to provide you trying to train your dog yourself with all the resources, resources, excuse me, that you need to be able to get everything done. Um, our shipping manager, Logan does everything. He's on top of it. Sh orders are going out the next business day or same day, depending on when they come in. And, uh, we, we try and make it happen as fast as we possibly can for you. So. Um, awesome. Let's get back to forward, it. I want to talk. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There was a couple, uh, clarifications here. Oh. One said, Ethan, you didn't get any fancy painkillers. I will say, and this is not me trying to be some, uh, macho guy. man. Um, it really didn't hurt. I knew that I cut my hand. I was like, Ooh, that was kind of ouchy, but not more than that. It was like, you huh. said you didn't even realize you'd cut your finger I didn't. at first. I didn't. I knew that something happened to my palm. I was like, that didn't feel comfortable, but and then I go and look, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's bleeding. And I didn't until I was rinsing, like cleaning my palm up a little bit, that I realized that my even my finger was cut, and it was cut deeper, which is part of that. But the other side of it, no, no pain pills. and give me anything. And as far as the tetanus goes, I uh, had a booster just a few years ago. So, And by few, I mean like three and a, four years ago, I had uh, a tetanus shot. So they said I was good for now. Um, so the next little story that I want to talk about is Muddy's litter. Um, I'm going to make it real quick and brief, but, um, she was in labor forever. So she started doing some pretty heavy panting. Let me tell you how long. Okay. I had the opportunity to watch the entire first season. Yes. Entire first season of Tulsa Kings. There. That's what it was called. I was like Tucson. Majama? I don't know what it is. Tulsa Kings. Kind of a cool, uh, if you like uh, Sylvester Stallone, it was a, it was an interesting series-ish. Mm, kind of predictable-ish, but I watched the entire first season while she was having her puppies and didn't finish. So. Um, so she was in labor for a very long time. Uh, even just like the act of labor, lots of panting, contractions, um, and then finally pushed out her first puppy at almost midnight, um, so 11.45 Thursday night. And she finally finished having puppies at 1.30 Friday afternoon. So she was in labor for 14 hours, I think, is what I figured out. Um, or it was 2.30. It was about 14 hours of labor from, of from one puppy to the last puppy being born. And um, I was starting to get a little, quote unquote, concerned um, because yeah. her puppy um, prior to her last puppy was born seven hours. No, six hours. Six hours, which is past six what's hours. normal. So. Yeah. And we'd given a couple um, doses of oxytocin recommended by our vet. And it would help her with contractions and progressions, but then it would subside again. And we basically, Ethan and I said, if she doesn't have a puppy in the next 30 minutes, we're going in 
to the vet. Um, and she did. She's like, I heard you. Definitely didn't want to go through a C-section like her mama grit. So um, she pushed out her last puppy. Um, that was her 10th puppy. And um, if you saw our litter announcement, you probably saw that we announced that there were seven puppies. Um, so she did. She had 10 puppies, all live births. Um, three of those puppies were smaller. Um, and we immediately started supplementing those puppies, uh, bottle feeding, syringe feeding. And they were, they were latching. They were uh, not lethargic. They wanted to nurse. They were active nursers. And um, over the course of the next three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, we lost the three little puppies. And it's heartbreaking. You and all of our kennel help put they're all into trying to save these little guys, supplementing every couple hours, starting on, you know, liquid antibiotics to help with any aspiration or anything that's happening. Um, and, you know, keeping them warm, giving them extra heat sources with heating pads, heating bottles, um, because they really just have nothing to um, them and they just can't sustain body temperature and all the things and sleeping out there with them. So, you know, Muddy's got 10 puppies. We don't need her um, accidentally squishing puppies and things like that. So we were out there the entire time with her um, overnight. <laughs> and Autumn helped out, took a night shift because um, we'd already been up a couple nights already, um, staying with her during her laboring process. And we still lost those three puppies. And it's heartbreaking. Literally, I'm out there bawling in the whelping box. Tessa's out there bawling in the whelping box. Um, because you, it's your blood, your sweat, your tears. You care about these puppies. You care about the mamas and nobody likes to talk about it. You know, we like to make the announcement, Hey, we had seven puppies They're You know, these puppies are all healthy. Nobody wants to say we had 10 puppies and now we have seven because nobody understands why those three puppies didn't make it um, and that we did everything that we could to try and keep them here with us. But um, it happens, and it's the hard part of breeding. Um, thank goodness we didn't lose more. Thank goodness we didn't lose Muddy. Thank goodness we didn't lose Grit when she had to have her C-section. Those are all those, you know, incredibly scary thoughts that I go through, you know. And when Grit came back and wasn't acting herself after her C-section, I was in a panic. I'm like, we have got to get back to the vet. Like Charles said, I kind of downplayed that. But um, I was scared. I didn't want to lose Grit. And that's, you know, something that I don't think as breeders we share with the public um, as much. And everyone else out there is like, I would love to have a litter of puppies. You know, my, my dog's amazing. I would always, you know, I've always wanted to have a puppy out of them. And it is amazing. Birth is amazing. Um, if you watch the reel that we did with shock, having her puppies and having this puppy born in its sack outside a mama, it didn't even know it was born. It's a miracle. It's amazing. But there is the loss, there's the risk and it's scary. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the weak spirited. Um, so in the last couple litters, we've had some loss and it's, it's hit home pretty hard. And I don't want to say it makes you second guess having puppies or having litters because it is part of it. Um, but it makes me nervous. <laughs> it makes me go, I don't want to have another litter where I lose a puppy. Um, I'm not ready for that. So, um, Kind of, like I said, the, the last couple litters have been tough, um, but we're excited for the future of our breedings. Um, we just did some little happy news that um, we did. A well, um, you can tell in just a second, the, the couple other things that we utilize here with Muddy specifically is uh, we've got an ultrasound. And though I knew you were going to need, you're going to get too warm. Well, you turn <clears> the fan off. Yeah. It's like, I'm so cold. I need to put this on. Um, we use an ultrasound. We could see, yes, there's one puppy and I'm not an ultrasound tech. Okay. I've got, uh, and my hat's off to those folks. Cause it looks like some kind of gray cloudy thing. And we have a, we don't by any means have a really expensive ultrasound, but we have a decent ultrasound. It was not cheap by any means, but, um, it gives us the ability to see, yes, moms are pregnant, but also, yes, there's still a puppy here and I could find heartbeats really easily. Just, Oh, there's a heartbeat. That puppy's alive. And, um, not even tracking distress as much from a heart rate standpoint because um, Charles and Annie were talking about the, what did you guys get? It's a little a Doppler. Doppler. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we have a Doppler, so we we use that um, to check on puppies just to kind of get an idea, like, heart still beating, is somebody in distress, like, going real fast? Um, and all we can do is compare because, I, again, I don't know sure, what's this fast one's and fast, what's not. This one's not. But, like, yeah. this puppy is really racing, so it's it's probably in trouble. Yeah. But all of that being said, that's part of what we're doing monitoring-wise. Um, we have access to things uh, from that we've gotten from our vet with instruction and how to use, and then we work with them on, should I do this now? Should I do this now from a consult standpoint? And it's all um, – in, in the direction of having the pieces and the full-time stuff. So we are not the breeding police, um, but we try and tell it like it is to anybody that's interested in doing it. Things like, are you prepared to have to take two days, days off of off. work because mom started to go into labor and then took 20 hours or whatever it is or needed a C-section and then needed round-the-clock care because she is a new mom and had no idea what even taking care of puppies were. And you had to really help with all of those things. So it's all things that can happen that get really overlooked. It's pretty easy to say, let's have puppies. Just know these things are, are possible and be prepared on your end to do the best you can for your dog. So that something bad doesn't happen. Yeah. And even though bad things can happen still when you're doing all the things, the more prepared you are, the less likely something bad is to happen. So Yeah, because not only, I mean, you were talking about time off. I mean, we sat with Muddy from Thursday until Sunday, 24-7. Someone yep. was with her, 24-7. And, and by seven. we, we mean Standing Stone Kennel's yes. team. Kat yep. and I took a good portion of that. But Sam, Autumn, all Tessa, hands they on all deck to help were them. part yep. of that process of, and Liz watching over those puppies. So, so uh, she had 24-hour supervision for... Four full days? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Four full days, yep. Four full days. 24-hour supervision. Let that sink in. I mean, people spent overnights. I was, I took an overnight. Cat took an overnight. Autumn took an overnight. It's all... Sam took an overnight. Sam took an yep. overnight before the puppies were born. So, I mean, we couldn't do this and all the things that we're doing without all of the help that we have. So, our help, no, you are, are very important. So, um, but I did want to share good news. We're talking about breedings and when it all goes right, it's amazing. Does it always all go right? No. Um, and that's what we're talking about being prepared. But Hazel just got bred on Monday. Ooh, this one's cool. To Shooter via an AI, artificial insemination. So, um, Shooter is neutered. He is, um, 10 years old, so no longer, uh, offering stud services live coverage, but we do have a considerable amount. I wouldn't say a considerable amount. We have frozen straws for his breedings. And so we chose to breed Hazel to Shooter. And um, I know that that wasn't the original breeding plan for the year, but we felt that this would honestly be a better cross. So her puppies are due like the third week in July. So really excited. Basically her puppies will be due after these next three litters go home. So I've got a litter going home in June. That's Shock's litter. And then I've got Grit's litter going home in July and Muddy's litter going home in July. And then we've got Hazel's litter due the week after that. So pretty um, exciting. Um, Another litter that we're super thrilled about. Um, I know that Ethan and I have talked about no puppies in 2023 because we're puppied out and they're a lot of work. And he's told me, you know, no goats, no puppies, that sort of thing. So I kind of, it's not happening. So I had to work my magic because after Muddy's last litter of over 14 hours of labor, 10 puppies, that prolonged time between the last couple puppies um, and not wanting to risk her health, risk the health of her puppies um, and risk a C-section on her next litter. We've decided that this is a, going to be muddy's last litter and i'm like we can't yeah. not have a muddy puppy from Kat her said, last litter Kat said, Who, well, how are we gonna do this and i was like i don't know we're gonna have to raise a puppy i'm gonna have to eat my words so um i know that i saw that tori was um signed on so hopefully i'm not letting any cats out of the bag no pun intended but dustin one of our other how is that a pun cats 
out of the bag. You're going to actually let some cats out of a bag? Well, I'm cat. I don't know. I thought it was kind of punny. punny. Okay. Uh, but Dustin and his family said that they would be interested in raising one of Muddy's puppies for us. So I'm excited. I don't know how I can not have a shooting puppy, so... <laughs> well, that's <laughs> up to you folks, so <laughs> I'll let you guys you hash that out. don't have any babies anymore. Yeah, Yahtzee's not a baby. She can be a year and six months. Yeah, this, and these don't go home until She July. is the sweet baby Yachts. Until sweet there's baby another yachts. baby, she will always be the baby Yachts. Or until she has babies be. herself. It's uh, just like... Baby Breezy still. Oh, well. <laughs> yes. So I don't know. It's going to be tough, too. That's the thing. This was brought up today. So we had a, um, a what did you call it? Kennel visit today. Folks um, reached out. The gal's from California but has family in the area-ish and said, I would love the opportunity to come meet and talk with you about all the things. And it was, um, uh, come on now. Look at the universe. Yeah, Ethan always eats his words, but on this one, we're definitely not getting a puppy this year. I just—it's really not want us. One. I just really personally. Want one. Yeah, I just really, I just really want one. So what part of that is what I'm saying though? Really want one. Um, really want a shooter uh, hazel puppy. Really want, want a trick thunder puppy. Really, really want a quest really want chief a puppy. Trick thunder puppy. I hundred really percent want, want a quest, quest chief, chief puppy. puppy. Um, so, uh. Chief is a really cool combination. So, he's an Aspen Hill dog. And if you've watched any of our stuff, I'm I'm tangenting 100 directions, which is, um, this brings me back to the conversation. We're on a new one. Uh, and I haven't even got through the last three. Uh, when Nikolai was here, if you remember that live, yes, this is where we're going back. You'll remind <laughs> me. Um, when we had that live. I just had this pulled up. I was just <laughs> scrolling and looking. Nik- Nikolai uh, from Norway had come out here and he spent two weeks ish, two weeks, yeah, yeah, um, and he was on a live with me and he was like, I see how these conversations just tangent everywhere, um, so it was kind of fun for him and I was like, yeah, they kind of just do, um, but the gal that was here, I said, I'm really excited. We've got a bingo. We'll check on you here in just a second, Nate. I'm really excited for every litter we do. We don't do things just like, let's make some more puppies. I literally want a puppy from every single litter. Now, that doesn't mean that once we get through them, they come to maturity. We don't go, sometimes we go, oh, we may be looking for something specific. For example, we need another male from these genetics. Well, let's say there's only one male and it's, it ends up with something quirky. I don't know. Like maybe an umbilical hernia or maybe the puppy just like has a more timid personality or something like that. It's and just not the right yeah. dog to be a male from that specific. Every puppy that is produced from every litter is not a breeding candidate. Correct. So it, all of that being said, all of our upcoming litters we're really excited about and or we wouldn't be planning them. But right. one of the ones that we're um really excited about is the quest chief litter and for and those based on her timing her puppies should go home in 2024 oh i've got a new picture of chief here you need to put this bad boy up here it's a good picture here we go chief yeah that's a good picture and that's not the is that the edit doesn't really look like my edit maybe it is that was my edit that Charles put up. You yeah. have you edit? have a very different edited feel. Than we do. We, I yeah. mean, it's like it's it's different. It's yeah. it all is what it is. It's, but it's, it's one half really of the rich photography. In, yeah, I know, I know. <clears throat> I always say you can fix that in post, right, babe? What do you mean? It's oh, the image. The image is half photography, half edit. Yeah, half yeah, yeah. Your, your finished thing is is half. I mean, you got to get composition and everything right, but when it comes down to it, the the it's not done until you run it through Lightroom. Ah, uh, yeah. There's um, there's there's an edit. I don't know if it's any better. I just texted it to you. But it's a cool picture of him, too. Just another look at a, a sweet action dog. I'm Do looking, I need to put I'm it in I'm still looking the... at the picture, so I don't... Do I need to pull it up on my thing? No, I sent no, it to I Charlie. It. He'll have it on okay. his computer. Okay, got it. Oh, I should have sent the thing to you, then, not to me. If you can just magic it up onto your computer. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. I needed the bingo spot anyway. Okay. Well, I'm going to send you 
something else. So there's a, um, a sweet picture of him. Just a, Now, pull that pedigree up. This is the thing that I want to talk about. Now, there's two things that are exciting about pedigrees for me. Don't anyhow. click on that yet, though, Charles. I won't. Okay. All right, so we're going to pull this pedigree up. There it is. Bingo, bango, baby. All right, make that big <coughs> so I can see it. It will. You can't. <laughs> well, I also need you squinting, so no. You get it that size. <laughs> All right. So, I know he can't hear me. Um, the cool thing about this is Aspen Hills Invictus One Chief is um, a shooter puppy that is. Shooter is bred to a Nick's daughter. And the fun thing about that for me, I want to, I, I do want to zoom. Can you make that bigger? Your website does not really, I mean, I can. There, like, that, that okay. works. That's it. That's perfect. That's for all I can do the Apple zoom. I can't do the. Yeah, no, that's fine. Zoom. Yep, okay. that's fine. So um, when you look at Aspen Hills Rising Star, that is Nick's to Joe. Joe's a master hunter, really nice dog. I don't know exactly where Star is at or what that's happening there, but you can see some similarities here, the color, right? So you've got John's Cali girl up at the top. That's Shooter's mother. It's one of our foundation females. Um, John's Cali girl named lovingly after my cousin. Cali was my uncle's dog. He named her John's Cali girl. Um, there's a little twang in there because that's my uncle. <laughs> the uh, You've got Higgins. And then when you come down into that, you've got Nixer is out of Willow Creek's T-Rex. Well, Rex Man recently passed, but then Top Gun Darby. Darby is out of Higgins. And then when you go down there farther, Joe is also out of Cairo, who's out of, yep, you guessed it, Higgins. Then you come down to the bottom, and you have Quest for Trouble. She's out of Vex, who is out of Nix. Who is out of all those things? Go back to Higgins, right? Then you come down to the bottom. Out, Outlanders, Maid of Honor. You have Countryside, Show and Go, Cooper. Cooper is a Higgins son. Now, the other thing about that is you also have um, Jacob B.D. West went to Indian Brooks, Hustlin' Crystal. And Hustlin' Crystal and Indi the Indian Brooks stuff is also behind um, Five Shot Benelli. Go down more. Can you see down more? Is that where it's pulling? Oh, it's down there at the very bottom, right? Yep. Yep. There's the duplicate. So you've got Emmy and Espresso are sisters, basically. So I don't know if same breeding, same litter exactly, but they're definitely the same cross. They're sisters. All of that being said, it's uh, it's a really unique combination of things, genetically speaking, that would tie really well into like our stuff, Mako, or the muddy the muddy, muddy Zane puppy. Yep. yep, because muddy again goes all the way back into that Indian Brook stuff, being out of an Outlander dog as well, and muddy is out of a out um, of grit. Muddy is out. Muddy is out of a um, Blackridge dog. Grit. Grit is out of a Indian Brooks dog. Uh, not Indian Brooks. I think she's listed as Outlanders. Which yeah, something it goes back to the same it, stuff. Same same, same stuff. stuff. Same same. Want, so but. anyhow, it's a very interesting line breeding, but it's not a tight tight line breeding in the sense of there's a lot of variety that pulled to the same. So we've got lots of cousinry in there, which. Adds a lot of additional variety. So go up to the top there. You can see inbreeding coefficient on that specific litter is 13.8. And we'd have to do some magic to see unique ancestors at this point. Now, all around the pedigree aspect of things, people have asked, how do you get this program? How do I create my own pedigrees? How does this whole process work? And something that I am currently in the works, and I like to give... Uh, little teasers teasers on stuff long before I should because I don't keep secrets well actually I do but I also like to share exciting things so um, I'm in the process of setting up a online pedigree database program that would allow you to have access to my entire database as well as anybody that uses it will be able to import their database so Charles I know has different dogs entered in his as well as if you look at people that 
use this program specifically. Um, I know Fred Rice has an insanely vast in a slightly different direction, and I don't know that anybody will change, but the program itself is fairly difficult to work with in today's day and age. It's not very backward compatible. You have to have like older versions of Windows for it to work well. Creating pedigrees on. That created those, yes. So you have to have a Windows-based machine or you have to run Parallels or you have to run a... um, uh, You could do a native boot off of an Apple computer or whatever. You have to have Windows in order to be able to run the pedigree program and then it's goofy. Like it errors out and things don't work right and you just have to learn how to use it, Um, which is everything you've got to kind of learn how to use. But... I had the opportunity to move in this direction that will make it easier for me and at the same time making it easier for me will allow a lot of opportunity for other people because it will be at that point an open source to anyone that is a user of the program um, database that you can actually go in and say, I have a Nix son and I want to add that pedigree to my program. So you can just type in the global search Nix and it will pull him into your database and then you create your own custom database that is designed for your specific dogs very very cool as there are more users the database will build from our almost 30,000 dogs to hopefully hundreds of more thousands I mean it's uh it's and a really cool for option. clarification this would be short hairs yes um now granted we'll we'll move in the direction of a other breeds or make that an opportunity, but I don't have the dogs to add to that. I would have to pull that from other directions, but all of that being said, it would be accessible from your phone or your computer or your tablet or anything that you have access to an internet browser. It will work and you can edit, change, view pedigrees. So exciting. So we need to check a bingo, I believe. And then we need to talk about Hexer. The main event for this evening. Let's see. Who has a bingo? Oh, this one. That was it, right? I don't know. Go back. 7175? Yep. 7175. Now let's look at it. Jin. Puppy pregnancy. Yep. No, this one. It goes diagonally. Oh, uh, oh, sorry. We I'm an plug idiot. Standing Stone Supply. Yep. Standing Stone Supply. Gen Shout out free. to Patreon. Shout out to Patreon. And Thunderbutt. And Thunderbutt. Yep. Bingo. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, Nate, send Nate us Roberts. your info. Send me a message on, on Patreon. Yep. You just message me. I won the bingo with your address that you want the stuff shipped to. What you want on your collar, stamped out, custom plate, and measurements, key. and color. Yep. So uh, send me that you won, and what I'll do is get you a code, a discount code for uh, making a purchase so you can actually go in and type the information, and ah, it's not on me sense. to record it properly. So all of that being said. Delegation. We're delegating your winnings to you. And Logan. And Logan, <laughs> yeah. Yep, pretty much. So let's talk about Hex. How do you find out unique ancestry? Well, that's something that will show up in the pedigree program. (laughs) Anyway, uh, so Hex's little story started on Sunday. Not this last Sunday, a week ago Sunday. So Sunday the 13th, right? Is that when that Sunday was? Sunday the 14th, sorry. He um, started doing a little, like, coughing in the evening. (coughs) And we're like, hmm, did I hear what I heard? Or was he just clearing his throat? Or what's going on? Well, Monday, he pretty much coughed most of the day. On and off, we'd be like, yep, I'm hearing it. Yep, I'm hearing it. It's not, not going away. So Tuesday, we made a vet appointment for him and took him in. And immediately, he got diagnosed with, you guessed it. Well, maybe you didn't, but kennel cough. Kennel cough. And we were like, huh, that's funny. I mean, and I by guess. Huh, that's funny. I specifically <laughs> said to Kat when she called me, it's not kennel cough. Can they look at anything else? And I'm like, well, they said it was kennel cough. 
And um, we thought not kennel cough because literally we run a kennel and not a single other dog was coughing or showing any kinds of signs like that. Um, And this little dude likes to do silly stuff like run around with sticks in his mouth. And I was like, I'm sure he got one jammed down his throat or something like that because him and Glitch like to play stick chase. And, you know, when my children run around with sticks not in their mouths, but in their hands. Sometimes I'm like, Sometimes in their mouths. Have you seen Cade? <laughs> I have. I'm like, one of you is going to lose an eye. Well, I basically yell the same thing at those two puppies. I'm like, one of you is going to lose an eye or shove that down your throat or any number of things. Somebody's mm-hmm. going to get shanked with it. I don't know. Stop. Um, but we're like, okay, well, they put us on antibiotic, a cough suppressant, and an anti-inflammatory. I'm like, well, let's give this a couple days and see if it clears up. And by Friday, Friday, yes, Friday, it had not cleared up, and um, this was on the night that we stayed up all night with Muddy and having puppies, and I went to let Hex out of his crate on Friday morning, and he got out of his crate real slow, didn't want to walk around, was all hunched up, and very labored, wheezy, breathy sounds, and I'm like, something's definitely wrong, and it's not kennel cough. Uh, I'm like, well, Ethan, he's way worse, not looking in good shape. We're going to K-State. So again, we're having puppies. It's a crazy day and uh, we have a great team. And Dustin actually drove Hex to K-State for us. And they did the you know, initial workup where they take chest x-rays, which they um, saw some shadowing on some of his lungs. Um, They did blood work, uh, made sure that it wasn't kennel cough or any other number of things that they wanted to test for, just doing their due diligence. And Uh, they were a little concerned about the flu. Oh, yeah. They thought maybe like canine Canine. influenza or something like that. But um, they that would be highly contagious. Again, doesn't fit because no one else is sick. Yeah. But they um, also said he has air in his chest cavity. Um, And I believe that, and correct me if I'm wrong, but that is called a pneumothorax where he has air inside his chest cavity. And basically that air is compressing his lungs, which is making that labored wheezing breath sounds that we were hearing. So, um, and that, the pneumothorax is the air polythorax is fluid, like pussy fluid, as far as I remember them explaining. Oh, pyothorax. Pyothorax is the fluid and gunk. Inflammation or fluid, Fluid. yeah. Yep. So pneumothorax, um, but they weren't sure at that point if it was also a pyothorax. They said they were going to keep him in ICU over the weekend, monitoring him so that, you know, if additional air started um, impinging on his breathing that they could do a chest tap. Uh, And then the plan was to, um, that the assumption was he had a foreign body infection, which right guys, we've all been there, done that um, multiple times with multiple dogs. And so their plan was to make sure he stayed stable and then do a CT and then hopefully straight to surgery from that. So it was one anesthetic event. And um, you know, we've been through that with Nix. We've been through that with Vex. We were through that with Muddy. Um, and then... Went rec- through that with Shooter 1. Shooter 1. Um, I know that Charles and Annie have been through it with multiple dogs. Um, we've had other clients and friends go through the same process. And it's scary. It's not a guaranteed, oh, yeah, y- we figured it out. And we're going to do surgery and your dog's going to be fixed. Um, also, the last time we were at K-State for what we presumed was a pyothorax was with Vex and they did the CT and found out he was riddled with cancer. So not always lots of big feelings straight this week, forward yeah. with uh, what they think and what we see and what we find. So uh, I, I love K-State though. Like if I'm going to have a dog that has any, uncertainties of what's going on with them, K-State is going to get the answers and they are going to be on top of the um, updates. I get updates twice a day. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God, you're a fat belt this month. You have no idea. (laughs) Yeah. 
and I'm just going to throw this out there. This is one of those things that Ethan and I talk about all the time is, you know, we want to be responsible dog owners, responsible breeders. And, um, you know, people ask us, do you have insurance, you know, pet insurance, vet insurance for your dogs? And we don't, we just make sure that we save enough money for these, oh no moments where we have the funds to take care of the dogs like they need to, whether it's a C-section or, you know, medial, median sternotomies at K-State and things like that. Yeah. Looking into insurance for a single dog, I think is, uh, is a reasonable thing to do. And I know that there's better options popping up now, but uh, I think we are way money ahead self-insuring instead of insuring the larger number of dogs because we don't have one. Right. So it's, to apply an insurance premium to that monthly or annually, we're way ahead. I've done the math multiple times unless there's some magic new insurance program out there. So, And if there is, we want to know about it, <laughs> obviously. Sure. Uh, but anyway, so I've uh, been getting these updates all throughout the weekend. Um, they were hopeful that he would get in for his CT on Monday and straight to surgery if that's what they found because um, – you know, sooner rather than later. But they also said because he was so stable over the weekend, um, eating well, going to the bathroom, even raising a little a little cane in the ICU, barking and trying to get people to play with him. Sounds like a hex or puppy for, for me. He's barking at everyone. And yeah, they that. actually told me, and I forgot to tell you this, that they put a TV in there so he could watch TV so that he would settle down. <laughs> anyway, um... But, I mean, he's a nine-month-old puppy, guys, and he's supposed to be on, quote-unquote, bed rest in the ICU, and he's feeling okay because, you know, he's stabilized. They've got him on IV antibiotics, um, and and they're not needing to tap his chest because the pressure is fine. So he's like, eh, I feel okay. Let's Let's party. But... Monday rolled around and they were not able to get him the CT and the surgery because there were other more emergent cases, which is understandable. You know, dogs that are in a much more critical condition needing this, the CT, needing the surgery. So Tuesday rolls around and they're like, we're getting him in today. So he went in at nine that morning for his CT and um, they contacted me as soon as the CT was done talking me through their findings and that, that yes, they were going to go to surgery. And there had been the hope that, um, it looked like his two on the x-ray, it looked like his two left lobes of his lung were affected and they might have been able to go in through the ribs, um, instead of actually cutting him open, um, stem to sternum. And, uh, unfortunately after seeing the CT, they were like, that is not an option. It did look like the two left lobes of his lung were affected, but also they saw what they presumed was a infection tract from his chest cavity up to his heart right next to his aorta. And they're like, we need, you know, to be able to open him up, really see what's going on in there, get really good margins because, you know, if this is as close to his aorta as it looks, you know, we need to be very careful. We need to have room to work. So we're like, okay, well, he's getting opened all the way up and you're going to go find what you're going to find and try and get it out. So they opened him up. And the good news is he um, did not have to have either lobes of his left lung removed or even partial lobectomies because the when they were palpating that lung tissue, it was not as diseased as they had feared, which is really good news, as well as they um, did a saline bath where they basically like filled his chest cavity with saline to look for any uh, bubbles, which would have been the air leakage, so they didn't have a leak repair that needed to be made or excised. Um, But then they followed that track up to um, his heart and near his aorta. And um, they said, and we found something that we weren't expecting to find. We did not think it was going to be we this. We thought it was going to be like a grass on. That's what they had talked to me about. They're like, oh, you've heard of grass on. I'm like, have we ever heard of grass on some, you know, the mean seeds, the barbed seed heads that, you know, migrate in and then they can't come out because of those barbs. And then they just work their way in throughout chest cavities um, and cause lots of problems. So was not that it was a wad of fibrous grass. um, And Charles has a picture. It's from the surgery. So it's a little bloody, Uh, just fair warning to everyone. Three, two, one. Make that bigger. How big can you make it, Charles? Um, uh, I think I can make it big. 
So you can see those those forceps and the hemostats there for size. So it's a pretty big piece um, of fibrous material that they removed. Do you know what that looks like? This is uh, so I'm just looking at. It it looks like little blue stem, which would just be like basic. But how it's so green, it wouldn't have enough strength to like poke him. The old stuff, like the old dried down blue stem, because there's clumps of that all over the place. Where it was sprayed, maybe. No, no. I mean, just it just turns brown and looks dead in the. I requested. I, I requested that they save this for us in I like a little baggie, and I hopefully they did so that we can look at it a little closer and I see if we exactly can figure this out. Um, but because if it's little blue stem, I just planted an entire forty acres of that. <laughs> this is not a thing. This is not think. a typical no. normal thing. No, obviously they were like, we had no clue that this is what we were going to find. The university said we have never seen this before. Yeah. And so That's I, saying something they close. said, based on this finding, you know, we're rethinking a little bit about how this entered his body. It is too big to have been inhaled through his nose and um, gone through his airways and made it where it made it. So they are assuming and they're going to go back and look at the CT closer because they didn't examine um, on the CT hit more than just his chest cavity, really. But they're going to go back and look at his esophagus because they are thinking that it actually punctured and pierced through his esophagus, um, which is what actually let the air into his chest cavity, not the um, damage to lungs. And then, um, then it migrated up towards his heart after it got in there. But um, it's like... What the heck? So it pierced his esophagus, let enough air in to cause that. Couldn't um, he have just swallowed it and <laughs> pooped out some grass? Right? I mean, come on. Like no. all dogs? Like yes. all dogs. I don't know. So definitely want to look at this grass closer. I'm so thankful that he's okay. I've gotten multiple updates since his surgery that he's doing well. Um, they took him off of the opioids um, for pain now, and he's on an oral pain medication. Um, he's still having quite a bit of fluid coming out of his chest tube. So uh, basically, we cannot bring him home from surgery and from K-State until the fluid coming out of his t chest tube is minimal to none. Um, and then they'll be able to remove that chest tube, which is going to be the step that allows us to bring him home. They had said potentially three to five days from surgery, but that is still dependent on that fluid volume that's coming off of um, his chest. They did say good news, no more air leakage. So there's no air coming out of that chest tube. So that is good news. Um, so hopefully we'll be bringing the little guy home very end of the week, beginning of next week is what we're hoping for. So um Anyway, um, so you said it's a Zerg. What is a Zerg? I'm missing that reference. It's a Zerg. I don't know. Right there. I know, but I don't know what that is. Stuff, anyway, um, so thank goodness he's going to be okay. Um, potentially now keeping a nine month old puppy under bed rest for eight weeks while he heals completely is going to be rough. But we will do it. We've got practice doing it with other dogs, um, these high-energy breeds. Um, really think that they're okay <laughs> very shortly after surgery, and they are not. Because because they cut through, <laughs> you know, their chest, that um, – Oh, shoot. New cartilage. peer unlocked. No more eating grass. Guys, the dogs can literally <laughs> kill themselves doing anything. So unless yeah, you want to put them in a giant bubble. Which we did talk about this tonight. We're like, I think – at this point, we may be looking at those um, foxtail Fox masks. masks. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're not very realistic for a hunting dog when you're actually hunting because... You know, Wouldn't be bad for free runs. You need your dog do. to be able to make retrieves, and they can't. But there it is. that would be great for when we go on free runs and things like that for just one little extra level of protection. So, Sure. We will see if it um, if they work out for our dogs, but we have taken up a bunch of time answer you know going through our you know what else could go wrong spiel. But let's answer a few questions. No, How's we're it? over the we're over the time. Thank <laughs> you everybody for being here. We're I mean we are over the time. What is what's this? This is Aaron said. Thank you guys for sharing a crazy week, Ethan. Glad to hear you're okay. Glad to hear the mamas and pups are doing awesome. Sorry to hear about the little ones that didn't make it, Aaron. Ten dollars super chat. Thank, Thank you, you, buddy. We really appreciate that. Cat's gonna not leave without answering a question. Clear There's off. one really good question okay. at the top. Hold a get real it, good question. That's me. the only one we're doing. No, never mind. It's not that good. 
It, somebody asked who the picture was and behind you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know who that is. Yeah. Just, just some dog. Just some dog. Just is that to, Arrow? Yeah. Yeah, you took the picture. Oh, it's Arrow. I took the picture. Not and really sure why it's up there other than uh, Ethan oh, took the we, picture. Oh, we were doing it as a joke, and it's just been up there. Mm-hmm. I uh, like it. It's in there. case anybody is wondering what Nyx is doing, that's what Nyx is doing at the moment. He is sleeping. Old dog life, man. Pick one question. Sorry, folks, for taking so much time chatting this evening. But first, while we wait, there is a right angle. (laughs) Angleton. Got it. We'll never forget that again. Take a moment to let you know this episode was brought to you by Old Man Nix in the corner. Thank you, Nix, for being your bleep, bleep, bleep. He self. almost ended it. <laughs> yeah. It was really close. If that power strip came unplugged, it was over. We were going to be was. done with the yeah. live stream tonight. It so. had taken us 30 minutes to get everything rolling again. The good news is your computer would have kept it going, but this whole thing would have. So, this oh. is a good question from Kaylin. Got it. Did they figure out why she wasn't delivering properly? Um, so I did ask that um, after I picked her up, and they said when they got in and did the the C section, they looked and it looked like there were some lesions on part of her uterus, which could have weakened um, the uterus from being able to properly contract. Um, so even though this was already planned to be her last litter, and then after the C-section and everything else, definitively her last litter. So Grit won't be having any other litters either. Um, She is going to get to enjoy her retirement hunting in Kansas and South Dakota and Texas and living her best bird dog life as well as couch potatoing it after she's done taking care of these puppies. Did we put her on my list or your list? Is Grit on your Uh, list? I think she is on my list. But she, she's like the favorite. I don't know. I can look. She's the absolute favorite. I let her out whenever people visit the kennel because she goes up. And I, I'm really bummed I didn't get the picture of her while three different ladies, one behind her, one on the left, one on the right, were all scratching her head. Oh, and, and she, she was had her head back. back and just had her eyes closed. Like I totally this know. Is where I can I picture Grit's face. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> this, is, this is where I'm supposed to be. So this is a follow-up question from Nan Taylor Keelholz about um, that as well. So what was the ultimate cause of the necessity of the C-section? My list. Just explain that. God dang it. Um, just failure of labor progression. Basically, yes. Um, puppy size was completely normal. Um, she's had puppies that size previously. Um, there were a couple smaller puppies in that litter as well. And so the question of did all the puppies live? Unfortunately, no. She had nine delivered via C-section, and we are left with six puppies. Um, we did have three that didn't make it, um, and that all happened within the first 48 hours. Um, so... That was, those were great follow-up questions for the C-section talk. Uh, we only have a babysitter till 9 o'clock tonight, so we are going to have to call it quits. Um, thank you guys for being here, supporting us. Um, you know, we, we really like sharing these the, uh, nights with you where we get to go over crazy stuff that happens at the kennel, updates that we've got going on, fun topics to discuss, and then getting a few of your questions answered as well. So, 100%, guys. Um, until next week. Are we going to be here next week? I think so. Yeah. Maybe yeah. first. Yeah. Until next week, uh, we'll announce a topic. Maybe we'll be uh, a little ahead of the game and we'll get her done before <laughs> Wednesday next week. And We announced it Monday. I know. Maybe we'll do it tomorrow. Maybe we can start announcing it on Thursday. That's. We are not that prepared. We can try. Don't eat more words. Yeah, no. I don't eat words. <laughs> <sighs> I set goals. I set big goals, so when I fall short of them, I'm still in the big zone. So when you get the puppy, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, folks, I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Cat the dog trainer. We will see you next week.